Folks in Michigan, black lawmakers filed a complaint uh, about an ad targeting black voters from a Michigan Republican running for Congress. It was printed with the wrong election date in a black newspaper. Tom Barrett's campaign placed a full page ad advertising in the October 2nd edition of the Michigan Bulletin a black-owned publication predominantly serving Lansing's black community. However, the ad told readers to vote on November 6th, the day after Election Day, November 5th. Barrett and Demo Democrat Curtis uh, Hurdle are vying for Michigan's 7th Congressional District. Democratic State Senators Sarah Anthony of Lansing and Erica Geis of Taylor say the ad violates state law. Senator Anthony joins us now from Lansing, Michigan. Glad to have you here. So, first of all, um, what, what was his explanation for this screwed up wrong ad? You know, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. And, you know, the Michigan Legislative Black Caucus was disappointed and, quite honestly, furious when we heard about this ad that was advertised in our black community here in the mid-Michigan area. Uh, the Barrett campaign simply relegated it to a typo. Um, but anyone that is running for Congress, which is a very high office here in the country, should be able to proofread. Um, but the amount of sloppiness and, in our opinion, intentionality behind mis this, just the misinformation uh, related to uh, this ad has just sent shockwaves throughout the black community in Michigan's capital city. I'm the first black woman to lead uh, in this role in the Michigan Senate. And so when we hear about these uh, incidences of voter suppression, the Michigan Legislative Black Caucus has to act. And so we've been uh, disappointed, but also very frustrated. Um, any apology from him or is it just, oh, well. I mean, you know the game, right? It's business as usual. That It is, oh, well, it is, oh, it was just a typo. Uh, we've even heard reports of them saying, well, the black newspaper should have edited it. They should have corrected it. Now, keep in mind, in the same vein, the same exact timeline. Okay, okay, first of all, let me just say this right now. As somebody who's run three black newspapers, sales departments don't edit ads. That's right. That's right. That's right. And keep in mind, in a majority white paper, a mainstream paper here in mid-Michigan, they happen to have the identical ad, but with the correct date. Wow. <laughs> so, I, I mean, so this, wow. this same is ad, the course. same ad, right? Same ad, same graphics, just a, happen to have a different date. I mean, this is literally the equivalent of playing in our faces. And so the Michigan Legislative Black Caucus took action. We contacted the attorney general. And just today, they uh, instructed the Barrett campaign to cease and desist. Um, this is something that we have to be diligent. You know, we have seen time and time again, um, bad actors try to misinform black communities. And this uh, newspaper is distributed in our barber shops, our beauty salons, our churches. Um, anyone that has seen this ad now could be deceived and potentially misled. And and this is something that we can't uh, take for granted weeks before the election. Well, here's a perfect example. Two years ago, uh, two white conservative operatives uh, go to my iPad. Uh, they were they ran a voter suppression scheme and they actually were sentenced. Uh, Jacob Wool uh, and uh, Jack Berkman have placed some 85,000 robocalls uh, to voters in Michigan, New York, Pennsylvania, Illinois and Ohio, telling them that voting by mail would risk, quote, giving your private information to the man. Uh, the robocaller, which who claimed to be with an non-existent group called the 1599 Project, uh, falsely said that voters' information would go into a database accessible to police, debt collectors, and the CDC, which would use the information to impose vaccine mandates. Uh, again, this is what we see that always are happening that targets African Americans. Time and time again, you know, I am a proud member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and the amount of efforts that we are, uh, you know, putting forward in this community and across the state. Michigan is a purple state. Uh, we are a very much a swing state. And the amount of information that we're trying to get amongst our community, uh, this is a slap in the face to those efforts. But again, we see it each and every election cycle. This just happens to be the latest and most blatant attempt to misinform black voters. All right, then, uh, Senator, we certainly appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Here's the reality, Mustafa. Uh, we see the, this is like clockwork. You're going to see Republicans do all they can to try to shave votes off because they know if there's a lower turnout, it helps them. If more people turn out, 
they will say we can't win. Right. They're very clear on what the numbers look like. And, and that's why, you know, with the opening stories there around misinformation and misinformation, there's real intentionality in that space because they know that if they can just get a few percentages to change, then they stand a chance. But they know that if our folks know when to vote, one, they're registered, two, they're showing up to vote, that, you know, it's going to go in the direction of the party that actually cares more about our community. So, you know, it is a game. We got to understand that there's strategy behind it. Folks are not just making mistakes when someone says, well, we just put the wrong date. There, there's, there's no legitimacy to those types of statements because as the sister shared with us, you know, and the other newspaper that, that catered to white folks, you know, they, they had the right one. So we just got to understand the power that we have and the responsibility that we have also to make sure that we're going to trusted sources and then making sure that we're showing up to vote in large numbers. And that will take care of it right there. Um, Randy, bottom line is this here. Um, Republicans will try to cheat. Uh, and I mean, when you talk about how do you run the exact same ad with the right date in a white paper, but the wrong date in a black newspaper? Uh, yeah, that's called by design. By design, absolutely. And for a politician or anyone in that political world, <clears throat> election dates are like their birthdays. They, they are not gonna forget the election date. They may forget their wedding anniversaries, they may forget their children's birthdays, but they are not gonna forget November 5th. That is not a typo. That does not happen. So obviously it was purposeful because they're trying to confuse people and put misinformation out there. Another form of cheating that is not something that, this is not the first time they've done it. You know, Gavin, uh, and, and so I, I don't wanna hear anything from any Republican who say, oh, this was a honest mistake, it happens, no. It just, it's amazing how it happens over and over and over and over and over from the same party in different parts of the country. Definitely. Let's talk about Georgia, my home state. Just today, my mom sent me a video um, from where she proudly <coughs> cast her ballot. Um, and the line was very long, and we know which party to vote early. So I'm really excited about the enthusiasm that Vice President Harris and Governor Walls um, have generated among the voters of Georgia. The polls are extremely tight. Um, but as we've all been saying, we know that when the Republicans, knowing that they're bound to lose, what do they do? They change the rules. They rig the rules. Let's talk about what Mayor Bottoms, who you had on the show a few weeks ago, had to say, Roland, in reminding us about what the Georgia uh, Election Board was up to uh, in passing a rule, by the way, which our Republican governor, Republican secretary of state, and Republican attorney general all said was illegal to mandate that ballots be counted by hand. Why would they do that? To cast doubt uh, in the voting process in Georgia. And this is the same party, of course, that claims to be about local control, about judicial restraint, um, about limited government. Yet the state board enacted this rule that sought to subvert what local election boards could do in terms of ensuring a fair and transparent voting process. So it's important that we see through these efforts, whether they're happening in Georgia, in Michigan, or wherever, and to Mustafa's point, that we do what we need to do, which is to go out there and to vote, because the Republicans are not going to stop these tactics. They've been doing them for decades and have, have uh, intensified them since Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won Georgia. The rules that they've uh, put into place have been just, um, just terrible. But we're going to do what we need to do. They said we were dead. Detroit waving the white flag, the city filing for bankruptcy. That our best days were behind us. That living here is like living in hell. But you know what we said? We said F that. We rebuilt ourselves. We look out for each other, got our hands dirty, and put in the hard work. And this guy, he don't know anything about that. We are a city of winners, of up and comers, of builders. The Motor City. Bigger and better. Here, we believe in freedom. We don't bow down to nobody, and we never will. And so what Donald Trump doesn't understand, or care to learn, is that when he said, our whole country will end up being like Detroit if she's your president, that he should be so goddamn lucky. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message.